This is an abomination of German engineering. But it's not the saw. The saw is actually very good, which is why it's so popular. No, it's this right here. It's awful. And it's really a slap in the face to an otherwise notoriously good engineering culture. And today, I'm gonna fix it. Now it turns out solving miter saw dust collection takes a little bit of trial and error. And if you followed along the video series of me solving it for my rigid saw, you know that it's mostly filled with errors with trials sprinkled in. So I wanna take what I learned from there as well as the feedback from hundreds of customers who also bought that solution and apply it here. Now I'm a mechanical engineer, so in the interest of simplicity, I wanna lay out some very specific goals that this new solution should accomplish. And the first one being that it should significantly improve dust collection versus the stock dust chute. And while that may seem obvious, it can get easy to get caught up in the details and over-engineer a mild improvement. And nobody wants that. But in a very liberal arts approach, I'm not gonna use quantitative data to measure this, just my qualitative eyeballs. It should be abundantly obvious that it's an improvement. And number two is that it should be optimized for making 90 degree cuts. By applying the 80-20 rule here, I can safely assume that at least 80% of the cuts made are all done at 90 degrees and don't involve any bevel or miter cuts. I guess if you're a trim carpenter cutting down crown molding all day, Sorry about you. And number three, however, is I want the solution to be able to accommodate 45 degree cuts in miters and bevels in both directions without modification. In my opinion, 45 degree cuts should be table stakes for a miter saw, but what about compound angles or large work pieces? Well, for number four, I'd like this system to be quickly and easily removable, ideally without the use of any tools. If for whatever reason you run into a situation where the solution gets in the way, the last resort should be to get it the heck out of there. And finally, for number five, there's gotta be an easy way to adapt to different dust collection hose sizes and adapters. One of the biggest sources of frustration when dealing with any dust collection system is the sheer number of non-universal hose connections. I think even in my little shop, I've got four varieties. So I'd like this thing to accommodate everything from the smallest shop vacuum hoses all the way up to a standard two and a half inch dust collection hose. All right, so the first thing we need to do is understand what we're working with. So I'm gonna make a series of cuts using the standard dust collection system with a vacuum hooked up. Then as a control, I'll clean up the saw, make the same cuts, but this time without any suction hooked up at all. And based on what I'm hearing from most people, it's not gonna be good. Okay, even after only about eight cuts, there is a big mess around the saw. Let's get it all cleaned up and ready for the next test. You know, I even wrote a joke fully expecting for both the results to look exactly the same, but I gotta give credit to the Bosch engineers. It does something. I've also gotta totally appreciate how German over-engineered this thing is, even though it doesn't really work that good. You can see that with no hose hooked up, I've got this like rooster tail of sawdust going off in this corner, where with the vacuum was on, that just didn't show up and there's just kind of a general spread of sawdust everywhere. When I did the same test with my rigid saw, you literally couldn't tell if the vacuum was hooked up or not. But with all that being said, it's still trash. Just because you're better than that doesn't mean you're good. Okay, with the baseline and control test out of the way, let's get this thing removed and see what we're working with in terms of mounting options. So with the dust chute removed, you can see that it was actually mounted on this back articulating arm. And although there's a ton of room to work with back here to come up with some crazy solution, the one key detail missing is that though it travels with the head of the saw back and forth, it does not travel with it as the angle changes of the saw head itself. That's something I found to be extremely important when developing the rigid solution. So that mounting point, just not gonna work. You'll also notice that I removed the rear blade guard assembly from back here, which is mounted on either side of the metal saw blade housing itself. And I think this is gonna be our ticket because it moves back and forth with the saw as well as with the head as it goes up and down. This means we can always maintain that perfect angle to catch as much sawdust as possible. Now the obvious downside to using those mounting points is that there's just not a lot of real estate to work with. It's just over an inch wide on the inside and you've got a spinning blade of death spinning right through the center of it. But I think if we're clever enough, we can make it work. Here's where the power of 3D printing really comes in handy. I was able to take some measurements of 
out that area, which is not exactly easy to do. Model up some quick geometry and print this little test part, which took about 30 minutes to print. So now that I've got this nailed, I can move on to the full mounting bracket design. I then went back into CAD and turned this into this that mounts to the saw itself and then accepts the attachment into a special recess on the bottom. And the whole point of this is to make it quickly removable via two thumb screws on each side of the housing. Plus with some internal self-centering geometry, it means taking the chute in and out should be quick and easy. And what you're left with is a really stable mounting place that we can attach our chute to. And the mating piece on the chute itself will look like this, fitting securely into the mount and attached with two thumb screws, one on each side. Now for the design of the chute itself. This was my first pass. As you can see, it conforms to the shape of the blade nicely and extends all the way down to the point of dust generation, but it's a little too intrusive. There's not much room for the materials you're actually cutting, and you can see as soon as you start moving the saw around, it just kind of gets in the way. Another issue is as the blade guard comes down, it's actually gonna interact with where the flap is. Ideally, I'd like the blade guard to fit inside the flap just like it is on the rigid. It just kind of keeps everything neat and tidy. Now for the next iteration, I shortened it up quite a bit and I flared out the end to make room for the blade guard. And you can see that on the back, I added the port for the suction and added kind of a four magnet flange for a quick disconnect for different size adapters. Because remember, one of my goals is to make this thing work with pretty much any kind of hose out there. And overall it looked much better, but there's still a couple issues. And probably the most prominent one is because the suction extends straight out the back in line with where the dust is gonna be generated, it doesn't leave me much room underneath the arm for those magnetic connections. So I'm gonna go this route, I kinda of need to reroute it to one side or the other. Which is where version number three came in. You can see I added a gentle curve to the back end of this suction port to hopefully try and clear the arm. I also changed the geometry of the front opening to better accommodate the blade guard and create more of a natural flow into the dust chute. Because here's the thing, in fluid dynamics, whether we're talking about air, water, or air with sawdust in it, everything within a flow system will induce some amount of friction. And to promote more flow through it, you wanna reduce that friction when you can. So whenever I'm modeling this geometry and trying to think about how this thing's gonna be made, I've always got that in the back of my head. And after getting this thing mounted in the saw and testing some adapters on this back flange area, I realized that I still didn't have the clearance that I needed. So I'm gonna have to play with this angle a little bit. More importantly, though is that I don't think my magnetic flange idea is going to work because I'm trying to use common off-the-shelf six by three millimeter magnets and four of them in this orientation just don't provide enough holding power to that dust collection hose attachment. And yeah I could add more magnets or bigger magnets but really this is just going to increase the cost and complexity of making a bunch of these. So I think I'm going to scrap the flange idea and just go with a friction fit which honestly is just a lot simpler. And that's how I finally arrived at this. I like to say it was just version four but it's really version Eight. The biggest difference you'll immediately notice is the cool Bosch-ish blue I started printing these in. It matches the saw a heck of a lot better, and I think it's gonna make the final product look great. But some of the more significant changes are in the geometry itself. Starting with the suction inlet, I've got the curve now at a point where it's clearing everything and it accepts a wide range of adapter sizes, again with a friction fit. I've also gone through and really optimized this shape to both clear the guard and strike a balance between trying to capture as much dust as possible without being overly huge and getting in the way. But there is one problem that I just can't seem to get around. And that is that this opening geometry doesn't work at 45 degree bevels. It works great at 45 degree miters, but not bevels. Now the quick removal feature is nice because if you're doing a bevel, you could just take it off, but then you have no dust collection. So I made a second version of the exact same chute just with a narrower opening geometry that works at the 45 degree bevels. Now I wanna test both of these because my thought is that the dust collection at 90 degrees is gonna be much worse with this, but this works at all the angles, which is one of the key goals laid out in the beginning of the video. If it turns out that the wider mouth one is way more productive at catching dust, maybe I can offer this as like a bevel solution. Maybe if you do a lot of bevels or you could buy a kit that comes with both. I don't know. Let's test them and find out. All right, so in this first test, I decided not to install a flexible flap just to see how big of a difference it made. And the results are it's a slight improvement over stock, nothing to write home about. But now let's clean up the saw, install the flap, and try again. Okay, so it turns out the flap makes a huge difference. I would say there's considerably less dust behind the saw and around the saw after the test. 
But considering that was the larger version, I don't have high hopes for the smaller version we're gonna test next. And after looking at the mess from that test, I was actually pretty surprised at the performance. Now, if I were a betting man, I would have put all my money on the larger one performing significantly better than the smaller one. But it was a lot closer than I would have thought. Now, the whole premise of the narrow one was so that I can achieve all the different bevel and miter angles like we talked about. But after I loaded in the saw and tried the sliding bevel feature at 45 degrees, I was even getting some interference with this one, which means that to truly get a full range of motion across all the different miter and bevel angles, I'd have to make this thing even smaller, which in my opinion would just cut down performance way too much. So then I decided to put the larger one in the saw and try the different bevel and miter angles. And sure enough, miters at 45 degrees, both directions, no problem. I could even get all the way to 60 degrees and get the full sliding motion with no interference with the larger model. Now when I tried the bevel, I could actually achieve a 45 degree bevel without any sliding action. But when I try to engage the sliding action, that's when the interference occurs. So I'm going to make a judgment call. The larger version can achieve a 45 degree bevel in both directions, just not sliding. Which, if we're honest, how many times are we making sliding beveling cuts? Again, sorry, trim carpenters. In summary, I think this thing accomplishes what we set out to do. Number one, it significantly improves dust collection. Two, it is very well suited for 90 degree cuts. Three, it is also fully capable of making 45 degree bevel and miters, just not sliding bevels. Four, it is extremely easy to remove via the two thumb screws on each side. And finally, number five, the friction fit on the back makes adapters and different size hose connections a breeze. So for that reason, the larger version is the winner of my book. You get a higher level of performance without sacrificing any capacity except for sliding bevels. And there may even be small little tweaks I can make to make this thing even better. Like for example, I can close in this opening a little bit more. I think some of the sawdust we were seeing in the cuts was actually bouncing out of the chute instead of getting trapped in the suction. So I think by closing this more, I can hopefully recapture some of those particles. I'm also gonna add a couple screws around the perimeter just to secure the flap because it comes out a little easy. But other than that, I think she's ready for prime time. And considering I get just about an email a day asking about the availability for the Bosch sliding miter saw, I'm happy to say that these are now available for pre-order. There'll be a link above as well as down in the description if you wanna go check it out. Just keep in mind that it is pre-order, it's a way to get in line. Shipments are probably not gonna start till early January. It seems like every time I solve one of these dust collection challenges, I learn a little bit more, and this time was no different. I went through a full design iteration, eventually landing on this design, which I think works pretty well. Now, is it gonna collect 100% of the dust? No, and I would never make that claim on anything I make, but it should make a significant impact on the cleanliness of your shop. If you've got a giant box built around your saw or you've got all kinds of duct tape and flaps everywhere, I think this is the ticket. But if you don't care about dust, then yeah, it's not worth it. But also, why are you still watching? But for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've got any comments on anything you saw, leave those down in the comments below. And since I know someone's gonna ask, yes, I do plan on tackling the 10-inch version of this saw. I just gotta get my hands on one first. And then after that, the next saw in the lineup is the DeWalt 779-780. But if you've got another miter saw that you'd like to see this done for, leave that down in the comments. I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, keep pursuing shop greatness. Shop greatness.